All right, so thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, as you can see, we have four compounds on this particular slide, so we're doing slightly uh, something different uh, for today. So on the top left, we have lemon, top right, we have vinegar, bottom left, we have stingless B, and bottom right, we have the leaf cutter ants. So once again, something in common for you to think about is something related to carboxylic acid because that is a topic that we're going to look at for today on chapter 9.4, carboxylic acid. But before we go into the content, you may be aware that if you're talking about lemon, uh, we know that lemon is sour and you should be talking about acid, usually the, the taste of it is sourish. So we know lemon in this case is sour, it actually contains citric acid, we have vinegar, Vinegar contains ethanol acid. There's an, an anion for ethanol acid. It's not an acetic acid. Uh, the bottom left and bottom right, these two, um, these two uh, organisms that we have here actually produce what we call a uh, formic acid. So formic acid is also known as methanoic acid. So uh, the point here uh, is that all of these compounds that we are talking about are part of the same homologous series, which is carboxylic acid. So when I talk about homologous series, which is that they follow the same chemical formula, even though the number of carbons is different. So something for you to think about. So for now, these are the similarity between the diagrams that I'm showing here, and I'll move on to our slide for today. So if you look at this one here, this is carboxylic acid that we are talking about at the top diagram here is a 3D 3D structure and you can actually generate your own 3D structure. I will just put a link at the bottom so you can check out the link. There's a link uh, that you can actually generate your own 3D molecular structure which is very cool. So it says here that the general formula of a carboxylic acid is often represented by RCOOH where R is the acute growth such as CH3 and C2H5, such as members of the series differ by a CH2. So if we look at the top diagram here, you can see that you have two carbon atoms, as you can see at the top. So the gray, the one in gray is the carbon atoms, the one in white is the hydrogen atoms, and then the one in red is the oxygen atoms. So together, it follows the general formula or the chemical formula in the form of RCOOH. So you can see towards the right of the diagram is COOH and towards the left is R. So the number of carbon can change. So if it's one carbon, based on what we have discussed, we get something called HCOOH. Uh, that means that there's only one carbon that is present within carboxylic acid and the name for it is methanoic acid. If it's two carbon, it's ethanoic acid. Three carbon is propanoic acid and so on. Something for you to think about. So I'll move on to the next slide. All right, so this one here, based on what I've shown you in the previous diagram, you know that that particular structure has actually has uh, two carbon atoms, two carbon atoms. So what I'll do here is that the name for two carbon atoms is ethanol acid. Bear in mind, they do have other names as well, but the scientific name is ethanol acid. Sometimes if you go to the supermarket today, let's say you go to Woolies or Coast, and if you are purchasing, let's just say, a vinegar, if you look at the back of vinegar, it's written as acetic acid, and it says that it's no less than 4%, so usually it's between 4 and 5% of that particular container that you purchase uh, consists of acetic acid or ethanol acid that we are talking about. So the diagram that I've shown you as well, that is what it is, CH3COOH. So what you need to know from this side, you just need to know the difference between electron dot, structure formula, and content structure formula. We have discussed this many times as well. When we are talking about electron dot formula or the letter structure, it shows the dot and crosses. If it's a structure formula, it shows the bond. If it's a condensed structure formula, it's very similar to the structure formula, but without the bonds. Bear in mind, structure formula, uh, and we have discussed this before as well, when we're talking about hydrocarbons, when we're talking about alcohol, it shows the bond, but it does not show the lone pair electron. Something for you to think about. All right, so you may also come across something called the valence structure. Very similar to structure formula, the difference between structure formula and valence structure is that in valence structure, it shows the lone pair electron. In structure formula, it does not show the lone pair electron. So make sure you know the difference between three diagrams, uh, three of these diagrams. So you have electron dot, which is the Levy structure, we have the structure formula, which shows the bond, and we have the condensed structure, which is known as the semi-structure formula, it does not show the bond. Alright, so if that further compound consists of two carbon, it's known as ethanol acid. 
It is one company is known as methanol acid. Bear in mind, there's other names. There's other what we call just a common names that they use. So methanol acid, if you go out and you want to purchase methanol in the form of formic acid, ethanol acid will be ethanol acid and so on. Propanol acid here consists of three carbon. So bear in mind, it follows the systematic name that we have discussed. So if it's uh, if or the stem name that we have discussed, if it's one carbon, it's methanol acid, two carbon ethanol acid, three carbon propanol acid, four carbon butanol acid, five carbon pentanol acid, so so what we have discussed previously. Move on to the next slide. All right, so it says here about, or it talks about structural isomer. When we talk about structural isomer, we talk about molecule it has, a, has the same molecular formula, but different structural arrangement. Same molecular formula, but different structural arrangement. So if I show you this slide here, it says that structural isomers are molecules with the same molecular formula, but different structural arrangement. The carboxyl groups of carboxylic acids is always located at the end of molecule because the common atom is the carboxyl group, has a double bond to one oxygen and a single bond to another oxygen. So if you are talking about carboxyl, it always have that carboxyl group or carboxyl acid as a carboxyl group. It consists of one carbon that is double bonded to one oxygen and then there is a single bond to another oxygen. So how does this look like? I'll show you in a very short one. So if you look at this structure here, can we see that in this case, when we are talking about naming of that of that structure, uh, can you see that at the top, just give me a second. So at the top, you have COOH. So COOH, which is at the top, so yes, yeah, COOH. So COO minus is the what we call the carboxyl group. Um, so if there is no charge on it, it will have the presence of hydrogen atom. So what you need to do on this particular slide here is that if you look at this particular slide, the number of carbon in the main chain is for carbon. So when you are naming, once again, every time when you are naming the structure, you have to look at the longest unbranching. So if the longest unbranched is of four carbon, so the name for it will be butanoic acid. But in mind, this is not a butanoic acid because it also consists of that particular branch. So if I locate the branch, the branch is located here at the bottom, CH3. So we know, we know that the COH is the first carbon. So the first carbon, because when you are doing the naming, you must prioritize what we call the functional group. And we have discussed previously as well. When we talk about alkene, alkene has a functional group of double bond. Alkyne has, the, has a functional group of triple bond. If it's alcohol, it has OH. If it's carboxyl group, it's CO or COH. That is your functional group. So in this case, the functional group must be prioritized. So that's your first carbon. And then CH3, which is the side chain, is on the second carbon. So when you're doing your naming, this has to be 2-methyl-butanoic acid. 2-methyl-butanoic acid. That is the name that you have to give to this structure, 2-methyl-butanoic acid. If you look at the bottom, so systematic name of the following molecules, the longest unbranched is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon. So I'll give you time to work on this question, uh, but I'll give you some clue along the way as well. So if it's 6 carbon, think about it, I'll give you a hint there. So if it's one carbon is met, two carbon is add, three carbon is pop, four carbon is boot, five carbon is pen, six carbon will be hexan. So you have hex, so it will be hexanoic has, acid, and then you have the side chain, and this side chain you have to consider whether uh, it is on the second carbon or it's on the fifth carbon. So how do I come up to that number? If you are counting from the right, which is from COH that carbon there will be the fifth carbon so one two three four five fifth carbon some of you will be like hey what happened if i actually write two carbon uh two for that particular side chain that will be incorrect incorrect because you must always prioritize your functional growth so in this case the functional growth is on the first carbon can you see that functional growth is on the first carbon so if the functional growth is on the first carbon then what you need to do here is that when you're doing your naming, number one, name your side chain. Your side chain here will consist of six carbon, so it has to be hexanoic acid. 
Once you have done that, you put the side chain in front. So you have the longest arm branch, you need the longest arm branch, longest arm branch, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon. And once you have done that, you will need to name your side chain, which is on the fifth carbon. So think about the name. So you have something that sounds like, let's just say five material, has someone what I say? And see whether you agree with me on the answer. Uh, we will have discussion or more of this discussion back in the classroom. Um, but just have a try or have a go on this question and then we'll discuss more. Moving on to the next slide. So looking at this one here, it's a population and user of carboxylic acid. It says carboxylic acids are organic acids. They are commonly found in nature giving a sour taste to lemon juice and vinegar or making an end by a nettle prick uh, shrink. So what you need to do here is that you need to observe the structure. So these are the other examples of 3D structures. So we look at one before we look at ethanol acid, we consist of two carbon. If you look at citric acid here, you can see that citric acid actually consists of six carbon. You have five carbon and you have carbon as, as a side chain. So it's not very clearly done here, but you can just see there's a side chain at the top that doesn't joins to the that doesn't joins to the uh, logos and branching all right and then you have your formic acid for me a methanoid acid which is the diagram on the right there and that consists of only one carbon if it's one carbon and it follows the formula it will be haste coh and before i move on to the next slide as well just to let you know the formula that we have for this particular structure will be cnh2m plus one COOH, CNH2N plus one, COH. So if the number of carbon is one, when you do your calculation, it will be HCOH. As a result, if it's two carbon, it will be uh, CH3, COH. So CNH2N plus one, COOH. That is the formula that we're looking at. Moving on to the next slide. All right, so this is the structure of carbon CSC. It says the carbon CO functional group is made of Carbonyl group, carbonyl group and hydroxyl group. So carbonyl is CO, hydroxyl is OH. So you say both of these groups are polar, with oxygen being more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen. We know there's difference in electronegative value. And there's a high chance if there's a difference in electronegative value and there's a net dipole and it's not symmetrical, um, there is a high chance it will be polar. It will be a polar molecule. And in this case, it can also form hydrogen bond. Why? Because there's lone pair electrons on the oxygen. There's two electrons on the oxygen, and then there is also a covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen, as you can see on the diagram on the right. This diagram on the right, can you see that? So, lone pair electrons will be present, and there's a covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen. And it says here at the bottom, electrons are drawn away from the hydrogen atoms, enabling it to reach water to form H, which means that it can act as an acid because it can release hydrogen ion. For some of you may be aware of you have done something on acid and base, we know that acid, the reason why a product or a particular substance can be an acid is that it releases hydrogen ion. If it releases hydrogen ion, it will be a form of base. So in this case, it is an acid. And looking at the diagram there, says electrons are drawn away from the hydrogen of the carboxyl functional group, allowing the hydrogen to be donated as hydrogen ion in an acid base reaction. So we'll talk more about or we have more discussion about acid base uh, in the next few chapters. But for now, what you need to know, carboxylic acid, you are talking about that particular structure. It is RCOH, so R can be anything, and COH is the uh, carboxyl group. It consists of the carbonyl and the hydroxyl group. So carbonyl is CO, hydroxyl is OH. And then in this case, because there's difference in terms of the electron negative value, and oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen, it will draw electrons from oxygen and hydrogen. Eventually, the hydrogen ion can be disposed when it dissolves in water to release hydrogen ion, which is the reason why carbon acid acids are acids, even though they are weak acids, just like they are weak acids because they don't dissolve completely um, in water, but they can dissolve partially in water. All right, moving on to the next slide. All right, continue on the boiling points of carboxylic acid. It says that the hydrogen bonding between two carboxylic molecules results in two molecules forming a dimer. Dimers are two identical molecules bonded together. The formation of dimers between two carboxylic acids is one of the reasons carboxylic acids have higher bonding points. The hydrogen bonding that occurs between the carboxylic acids and water molecules make the carboxylic acids more soluble than alcohols in water. The high solubility of carboxylic acids explain why they are frequently found in solutions such as citric acid in orange and lemon juice. 
So when we are talking about carboxylic acid, it can form hydrogen bond, and it can actually form two hydrogen bonding with another carboxylic acid molecule, and it looks something like this, it forms a particular dimer structure. Can you see that? It looks like a crystal structure here. So you can see there's two hydrogen bonds that can be formed between two carboxylic acid molecules. Um, so the question here is that when we are talking about boiling point, it says the boiling point of carboxylic acid is generally higher than boiling point of alcohol. So you may have a question saying that alcohol can also form two hydrogen bond. But why alcohol has a lower boiling point? Yes, that is true. But something for you to think about that carboxylic acid actually has a greater, uh, greater molecular weight, which means that it will have a higher strength of intermolecular force, the force between one molecule and another. So both of them have this dispersion force. Both of them have dipotel, both of them have hydrogen bonding. But the dispersion force of carboxylic acid will be greater than the dispersion force of alcohol because of a greater molecular weight in carboxylic acid. And that is the reason why carboxylic acid will have a greater of a higher boiling point as compared to alcohol. Something for you to think about. So once again, carboxylic acid can form hydrogen bond. Look at the bottom and the diagram at the bottom here. They can form that two hydrogen bond. Um, and they are soluble in, in water in that sense because they are polar. Bear in mind that alcohol and carboxylic acids are both polar. They are soluble in water. But for alcohol, as we have discussed, when the number of carbon increases, solubility will decrease because of increase in the number of carbon and carbon in general, they are non-polar in nature. So something for you to think about. So in this case, carbon is are highly soluble in water. There's a reason why they can dissolve in water. More on the next slide. All right, so you look at this diagram here. Once again, you can see that carbon acid will have a boiling point with the same number of carbon. With the same number of carbon, you have a greater, greater boiling point uh, because of that increase increase uh, a higher molecular mass or molecular weight as compared to alcohol. Going on to the next slide. So this is the final slide that we have here. You can see solubility of carbon acid. So we did mention about carbon acid generally they are more soluble as compared to alcohol. But the solubility will still decrease when they increase in size. Why? Because a longer carbon chain means that more of the molecule is non-polar. How do we know? If you look at this structure here, and these are the different names for these different carboxylic acid. So if it's one carbon is methanol acid, two carbon is ethanol acid, three carbon is propanol acid, four carbon is butanol acid, five carbon is pentanol acid, six carbon is hexanol acid, seven carbon is heptanol acid, eight carbon is octanol acid, nine carbon is tonal acid, ten carbon is decanol acid. You can see that when the number of carbon increases, the solubility actually decreases. So if you look at methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, the solubility is unlimited. So it means they are fully soluble in water. But if you compare between butanol and pentanol acid, you can see the solubility actually decreases. Why? Because of the increased number of carbon. Carbon generally is non-polar. We know that hydrocarbons are non-polar, but we're talking about alkene, alkene, and alkyne. So if the carbon chain is non-polar, they will not dissolve in water. But what remains or what enables carboxylic acid to dissolve with water is that particular carboxyl group, which is COOH. So COOH remains as it is, the same number of COOH in each of the carboxylic acid. But what has changed is the number of carbon. When the number of carbon increases, the solubility of carboxylic acid will decrease in water. All right, so that's all I have for today. Uh, make sure you email me any questions if you have questions. Um, and you can also put it on social stream. We will have more discussion in class as well on this concept. So I'll see you then.